We've all been there. It's all happened to us. You've taken your photographs back to your laptop and there's just that one that you're like, oh, can't do anything with it. Can't do anything with it. Today, I'm going to show you how you can potentially turn a photograph that you would usually bin to a photograph that you will be pleased to post. So stick around. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Ben and Media. My name is Nathan, and it's an absolute pleasure to see all of your wonderful smiling faces. Thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail. So we've all been there. It's happened to each and every single one of us that you've been out, you've taken some photographs, and there's just one or two that are just blown out or just ruined, or you can barely see what it's supposed to be. It's either too dark or too light, or you've just not got your settings correct. And nine times out of 10, you'll just go, right, pff, delete, in the bin, don't wanna see it anymore. But I'm here to tell you that you do not potentially need to give up on that photograph. There are ways within Lightroom, within Photoshop as well, but I'm not gonna show you in Lightroom, how to sort of see if you can save an image that you would potentially have thrown away before and potentially got yourself a banger, really. Now, before we dive into the laptop, I'm just gonna let you know that these results work better if you shoot in RAW. Because with a RAW image, it saves more information in the file. Of course, if you're shooting JPEG, crack on, enjoy yourself. But sometimes what you'll notice, if you shoot in JPEG, it sort of compresses some of the highlights and some of the shadows, so you can't get some of that information back. With a RAW image, it keeps a little bit of that information, even though you can't quite see it in the blown out proportions of your photograph. So I would always say it's always best to shoot in RAW if you have the opportunity to do so. But if you ha also have a job which says, you know, I just want the photographs in JPEG, send me over JPEG, that's fine. Shoot in JPEG as well. Some cameras also have the option to shoot in RAW and JPEG. Obviously it takes, lot, takes up a lot more memory on your cards as well. So it's always an option, but I would recommend shooting in RAW. So it is that way, if you are out and about and you've got a photograph which is just a little bit too much, it's a lot easier to save it and bring it back. So let's dive into the laptop and I will show you a photograph which I took just the other day that I almost threw away. And by the looks of it, I think I may have saved it. So let's go in. And guys, so this is the photograph I was telling you about. You can see it's completely blown out. I have my settings all completely wrong. And, you know, it's a nice photograph of Waterloo Bridge. That's what it is, but nice little buses going across in the sort of like parliament part of the city in the background there. But as you can see, there's no information in the sky. It's just, oh, and I was, I almost got rid of this photograph until I decided to take a bit of a play with the settings. Now, the first thing I've done is I came across to the highlights and I brought them all the way down. And I did the same with the whites. Got the whites and brought them all the way down, minus 100. Now, it was almost starting to pick up some of the detail. So then I thought, if I start coming down and bring down the exposure, brought down quite a fair bit, not that much, about there. Then I brought the contrast up ever so slightly to try to bring out the lines as well to about to about there that looks pretty good so now i was sort of happy with that but then i need to bring in a little bit more sort of like bounce to it so i'll bring it up to the blacks brought the blacks down to roughly about there let's have a quick little look 50 60 60 is pretty good all right and then i only played with these little sides down here as well so texture i brought the texture down not too much, uh, 18, 20, it's not too bad. Clarity I brought up, because I like having texture and clarity fight each other, so I, I matched them. So 21, 21, 18, 18, 21, exactly the same. So it brings a little bit more detail, makes the texture and clarity fight each other. And then I just brought the dehaze up a smidgen as well, by about there. And that's brought some color into the photograph. 
Now, I brought the vibrance up to bring out the natural colors that aren't necessarily peaking. Well, I'm up to around about midway through the 20s. And then I just put the saturation down, not by too much. And that was it. I didn't do anything else when I was playing with this photograph. And this was the example that I wanted to show you. So if we hit the backspace key or the back bracket key, or the backspace, backslash, backslash, to go to before and after, you can sort of see huge difference. A photograph that I would have dumped, got rid of straight away, but with only playing with these sliders, the basic sliders, I've managed to bring some life back into this photograph. And that was it, that's all I wanted to show you. I just wanted to show you that not all photographs need to be give up on. And this one sang to me, so I think I could be saved. And there we go, I have saved a reasonably okay photograph. And that's it, done and dusted. Now it's probably not the best photograph, it's probably not a photograph that I would necessarily post generally, but when I started to edit this group of photographs when I was out and about in London, I came across this one, I almost deleted it, but then I thought, Do you know what, I'm gonna save a bit of a play, and because I managed to save as much information in that photograph, I decided that, right, cool, this will make a really good video for up and coming photographers just like yourself, or maybe seasoned photographers who just don't know that they can potentially save a particular image with doing this. And as you can see, I just basically used the basic settings. I didn't use any other settings apart from them. Like I didn't go down to the cone or anything like that. That was just within the basic settings. So don't give up. If you see a photograph, don't give up on it. Like there was a potential that you could save it, especially if you know it's gonna be really, really good or it's a photograph that you've waited a while to do. You just didn't get your camera settings right. And it literally was a quick little, that's awesome. Oh, let's run off. Give it a go. Give these photographs a chance to talk to you, to breathe, to be resurrected from the recycle bin. And uh, yeah, yeah, I think that one's it. I think that's all I need to tell you about this particular, particular video. So guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed learning something with me. It's always a test to, to sort of expand your knowledge and I'm always learning as well. Don't think I'm the, the finished article. I am not, I'm still learning. I'm learning about Photoshop and this, that and the other. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you wanna know anything else that I do here over at Benham Media, my social media will be floating just about down here. Links also down below as well. Also, if you are interested, I am still giving away my presets. They are free over on my website, link down there as well. And if it's not too much trouble, please, please consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel. We are a slowly growing channel. We are a slow growing community and I look forward to seeing or meeting or hearing from each and every single one of you. So guys, thank you so much. Until next time, my name's been Nathan. You've been sensational. Thank you and goodbye. Mwah, 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 mwah.